So um, we will start by graphing the tangent function first, right? So let's first think about, and before we even graph, let's think about what tangent is, right? If you remember, we had said before that tangent is sine x over cosine x, right? Now, any time a variable shows up in the denominator, that's a red flag, right? Because can you ever have zero in the denominator never. ever? Never, right? So you can never have, for example, three divided by zero. That's undefined. So since we have a denominator there that has a variable in it, we have to watch out for all the times that that denominator equals zero, okay? So in this case, our denominator is cosine of x, right? So wherever cosine of x is zero, this tangent function is not going to be defined, right? So tangent is undefined at all points where cosine of x is equal to zero, okay? So let's think about where cosine of x is zero. If we go back to where we graphed our basic cosines, Right, so here's a cosine. Where is cosine of x zero? Cosine of x is zero wherever it crosses the x-axis. So look, cosine of x was zero there and there, right? And what points are that? I know it's hard to see, but that's pi over two and three pi over two, okay? So if we go back here, cosine of x is zero at x equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. So basically all of the pi over 2s, okay? At these points where cosine of x is 0, the graph of tangent of x has vertical asymptotes, okay? All right, so now... When we graph tangent, that's what it looks like. So do you see here, you have a vertical asymptote and then a vertical asymptote and another one here, right? So if you could see the vertical asymptote at all of the ones where you have a pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, there's one at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, all right? So that's where they're at. All right, so now... Do you also see that tangent, just like sine and cosine, is repetitive? It repeats after like every equal interval. Um, in this case, though, how often does it repeat? It repeats after a period of pi, right? So take a look. From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, how much is the distance? You're right. Half a pi, half a pi, that's a total of pi. And then if you go another distance of pi, it repeats again. Another distance of pi, it repeats again. So the period for the tangent is just pi, not 2 pi like sine and cosine. Um, is this like similar to the other ones how there were like go through like sound waves? Uh-huh. Is that, is this, like what is this? Is this like an anything? Right. So this is, it would be um, a combination of the sine and the cosine. So like if you took the two of them, and you divided them, that's what it would look like. But it, it doesn't have a direct application to like, uh, like e and waves, like sound or light. Does it have anything to do with like, is it, is it, um, is it, is it Practically speaking then, we have to watch out for the fact that the period is pi, not two pi for this one. And we also have to watch out for the fact that the main, the, this initial cycle, it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So do you remember how, you know, before we were setting up our inequalities to go from 0 to 2 pi, right? That was because, you know, that's where the initial sign started and ended. Now the initial tangent will start at negative pi over 2 and go to pi over 2. Tangent's a bit of a rebel, right? It doesn't conform to the, you know, 0 to pi situation, okay? So that's number two that you have to watch out for. Number three that you have to watch out for is that tangent goes up on the right and down on the left. 
Okay? So it's up on the right, down on the left. Okay? All right. The general form of the tangent looks like this. Does that look familiar to you? It's the same as with the sine and the cosine, right? The same A, B, C, D. And you know what? They do the same thing for the tangent as they do for the sine and the cosine. All right, so to recap, how big is the period of the tangent? Pi. Just pi. And again, the initial cycle starts and ends at what point? Negative pi over two. To pi over two. Fabulous. That is pretty much all you need to graph, okay? That and up on the left, um, up on the right, down on the left, okay? If it's negative, then it will be the opposite, yeah. Okay, so to graph a tangent function, we're going to solve this inequality. Um, and actually, so it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, um, just like we said before. But here, it's got to be less than because of the asymptotes. So let's fix those. Okay, so instead of going from 0 to 2 pi, we're going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the tangent. Um, the beauty for this is this also automatically solves for the asymptotes, okay? So first we solve the inequality just like we did for the sine. We graph the asymptotes because what's a tangent without asymptotes, really? We find the midpoint, okay? And then we have to plot points, all right? So let's do this. Okay. So first and foremost, we're just going to graph y equals tangent of x. So first we're going to do negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And inside, right, I'm just going to put this, right, whatever comes after the x. Now, if you need to solve, you solve this one. is already solved for me. Okay, so this does two things. This is the start and end of the period, right? So these are start and end of the period. Also, they are the asymptotes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Just like before, here's my uh, x-axis. All right, so we're going to start from negative pi over 2. Go over 1, 2, 3, 4 to pi over 2. Okay. But now, at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, I have asymptotes. Oh, my. Yes, we're going to do that eventually. So now, let's find the midpoints. All right. What's the immediate center here between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2? Zero. Zero. And that's where eventually we're going to put our um, asymptote. I'm sorry, the y-axis. Here, the midpoint between halfway between 0 and negative pi over 2 is half of that. So it's negative pi over 4. And then here, it's positive pi over 4. Very symmetric for this one. And so you know that the y-axis goes here. OK. Once we do this, the third step is the following. In the center, unless there is a vertical shift, tangent's always going to be zero in the center. Now, we know it goes up on the right, down on the left, correct? How much do we go up? That's the A value. In this case, before the tangent, there is a one. So I go up one, and then down one on the left and take a look at how it looks. Okay? So there we go. You just graphed your very first tangent. Yay. Okay? All right. So this one, what's the difference? Well, I tell you, it's the change in A, right? So it's three tangent x. All right? So if I do negative pi... equivalent to the... Um, what's the Similar, yeah. We don't use the word amplitude, but um, so this is also going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Right, because so what this does is 
it changes the like the curvature of the tangent. So here, this is zero, and that's the y-axis. My asymptotes are here. Um, I have to put in these values. Again, it's pi over 4 and negative pi over 4. Okay, so look. Zero at the center because there is no vertical shift. Now, a value is 3. So we go up and down 3 spaces. So at pi over 4, I'm not going to go up 1. I'm going to go up 3. And here, I'm going to go down 3. Right? And so what this ends up doing is the curvature is less. So it's, it's like flatter. Right? So imagine what you did is... Imagine I tied a piece of string to that tangent up there. Imagine I tie a piece of string here and here, right? And if I pull on these red strings, pull up and down like this, what will happen to that tangent? It will get flatter, right? It gets straighter, flatter. So that's what it looks like. Okay. It's a bit difficult to draw. What I see very often is something that looks like this. That's like a waterfall, right? That's not a tangent. That's a very pretty waterfall, and I appreciate you, you know, prettying up your graphs, but you know what? It doesn't have to be pretty. Do a pretty waterfall next to it, but here we do just a basic tangent, right? Okay? All right. Can you be connected with two sidelines? They must not touch the asymptote, but they have to like follow them up and down, right? They have to follow, but never, never, ever, ever touch. Okay, so now, this was the question before. Now I have a negative 2 tangent of x. So again, it's going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And here is my x-axis. Okay, so negative pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 4, negative pi over 4, asymptotes, never forget your asymptotes. Okay, all right. At the center, we have our point right there. Now, we have to go up and down two spaces, but it's going to be in the opposite order. So to the right, instead of going up to, I got to go down to, and here up on the left. Okay? So it's going to look like this. And again, avoid doing like multiple curves. Okay? I know. How do you suggest you, you start in this, should you start in the center? It might help. It might help. And then eventually, eventually it gets better, right? So like, so if you start in the center and, and first do this, right? And then, right. So what you want to avoid is this, which I see very often. Don't do that, right? Because like I said, no waterfall, no like step gardens. Okay. Okay. All right, now for things to get a little bit more interesting, right? Let's, let's, it's never going to be, it's not going to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 all the time. So here we go. This one, we got to look for the vertical asymptotes and sketch the graph. So this one now has a 3x. So when I do negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, I'm going to put in the 3x, right? And then what am I going to do? Divide by 3 or, or multiply by 1 over 3. So I get negative pi over 6, x pi over 6. So you see now, these are where the asymptotes are. I like ASP for asymptote. That's a choice. Okay, so let's do those. So we're going to go to ne from negative pi over 6 over 1, 2, 3, 4 to pi over 6. What's the very center? Zero. zero. Okay, so what's halfway between 0 and pi over 6, this red one here? So that's halfway 
right? Between 0 and pi over 6, just like we did before. Right. So that's, remember what we were doing before is the, for the midpoints here? No, no, I know, but oh. it was 3. Oh, yes. Okay, so it's halfway between 0 and pi over 6, so that's half of pi over 6. And then you multiply across and across, so it's pi over 12. And so the other side is... Yeah, the other one. Yeah, the first midpoint is zero, and then I... Yeah. So asymptotes go here and here. Okay. Center point is on the axis. And now, on the right-hand side, am I going to go up or down on the right-hand side? Up, one. And so here I go down one. And there. So asymptotes are at x equals negative pi over 6, x equals positive pi over 6. If you like to abbreviate, x equals plus or minus pi over 6. One other thing. What is the period of this function? It's So remember for sine and cosine, we were always doing 2 pi over b. Here, the period is going to be pi over b. Right? So in this case, the period is how much? Pi over 3. Okay? Well, so again, the distance between the beginning and the end is pi over 3. So if, if you look at this one, it ends at pi over 6 and it starts at negative pi over 6. So what is the distance between beginning to end? We subtract, this is pi over 6 plus pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, pi over 3, right? So the distance is the same as the period. Okay, look at this one. How much is the period? It's pi over b, a third, 3 pi. Good. Okay. All right, so let's figure out the asymptotes. We're going to go negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Inside, I put 1 third x. What do I multiply by? 3 everywhere. So I'm going from negative 3 pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Nice and symmetric. So, negative 3 pi over 2? Yeah, for now, because I'm not shifting right and left. <laughs> so, you know what? This one, I'm going to spread it out a little. And then that takes me right over to the edge. 3 pi over 2. Okay? Um, the middle is 0. I got my asymptotes here. And here. Okay, so what's that midpoint between the 0 and the 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4. Huh? How, the, how I figured out these red points? Okay, so what I do is that this one is the midpoint between 0 and 3 pi over 2. So it's halfway between 0 and 3 pi over 2. So what I do is halfway between 0 and 3 pi over 2. Whoops. Right. And then when you're multiplying two fractions, you multiply across. So 3 pi times 1 is 3 pi. 
over 2 times 2 is 4. So you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. Center is going to be 0. I go down on the left, up on the right, and you'll see what this one it's actually not as good of an idea to spread it out, right? Because then, right? And it's choice, yeah. It's just choice. So where are the asymptotes? X equals 3 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. Okay? So now look. 3 pi over 2, that's 1 and a half pi. So to the left, or, or to the right of this is 1 and a half pi. And then there is one and a half pi here. Together, how many pi is that? One and a half and one and a half. How much is it together? It's three pi, right? One and a half and one and a half, it's three pi. And if you notice, our period was three pi. Right? So that must be consistent. Okay, so... So, Jordy, this one's for you because uh, you were um, you didn't like that it was so easy before. No, no, that was a <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so let's do this one. All right, so negative pi over two to pi over two. What am I going to put in the middle? X plus pi over two. Okay. I'm going to subtract pi over 2, subtract pi over 2, subtract pi over 2. All right, so here we have to be a little careful. In the middle, I just have x. On the right, I have pi over 2 minus pi over 2, which is 0. So what do I have here? Um, I have negative pi over 2 minus pi over 2, if you write it you know, horizontally, right? So how much is that? Um, negative 2 pi, just kidding, positive. Negative, no, it is negative two, negative 2 pi over 2, right? Okay, so what happens is the denominator is a 2. So just take a negative 5. Right, this is adding, so it's negative pi plus another pi. So that will be negative pi, negative pi, to x to 0. So now my asymptotes are x equals negative pi and x equals 0. So when I go to graph, I'm going to go from negative pi, 1, 2, 3, 4, to 0. Okay. Can you find the very center of that? So I have a suggestion here, negative pi over 2. Do we agree? Yeah. Right, so it's half of negative pi plus 0, which is negative pi over 2. And now look at this blue one right here. That's half of negative pi over 2 plus 0 half of negative pi over 2. When I multiply the numerators, 1 times negative pi is negative pi. The denominators, 2 times 2 is 4. So negative pi over 4. Okay, now this one in the green, that's going to be tougher. That's half of negative pi. And then I'm going to add negative pi over 2. Oh my. That's a tough one. Right? So how are we going to do that? So that's half of, eventually, yeah. So negative 2 pi minus 3 pi over 2. Negative 3 pi over 4. And that's tight over there. Okay, asymptotes. Can't leave home without them. Okay. Center, same situation. We're still at zero. Okay, on the right, 
Do I go up one or down one? Down. Down, down there's a negative. So up on here. Okay. So next for the cotangent, this is so similar to the tangent, except when it's not actually. So the cotangent, right, it's also similar to the sine. It's similar to the tangent. Now it's cosine over sine. So look, you still have a denominator with a variable, but this time it's sine of x, right? So cotangent is undefined at all points where sine of x is equal to 0. So let's remind ourselves, where is sine of x equal to 0? Right, it's at 0, pi, and 2 pi. And so if you continue the pattern, it'll be 0 at 3 pi, 4 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, and so on. All right? So 0 and pi. Um, so here, sine of x is 0 at x equals 0, pi, and so on. So at these points, the graph of, whoops, this should be cotangent of x, has vertical asymptotes. Okay? All right. Here is cotangent of x. At first glance, what does it look similar to? Um, tangent. tangent. But what's different? It's opposite. It's opposite. <laughs> <laughs> we still have asymptotes, but look, it's opposite. It goes up on the left and down on the right, because it would be too boring if, all, if everything was the same, right? So this is the opposite. Does it look like a negative tangent? It looks like a negative tangent. Because it's flipped. But what else is different? Where does this start and end? Where does that initial negative cycle start? Zero. Or this is the one we look at. It goes from 0 to pi, right? So not negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. My, that would be just too boring. This goes from 0 to pi. So lots of rebels in the family of these trig functions, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the period is still the same. It's pi, right? So the period of the cotangent is pi. But now the initial cycle starts at x equals 0 and goes to x equals pi. So... What does that mean for us? To graph, I'm going to solve this inequality with less than, not less than or equal to, going from 0 to pi. Okay? Um, so, let's do a little um, summary. For sine x and cosine of x, the inequality we solve goes from 0 to 2 pi. For tangent of x, it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then for cotangent, it goes from 0 to pi, right? Because, right, we need a little, like, flavor to things, okay? Okay, so let's do this one. Um, what is the period of this before we move on to anything else? How much is the period? Right, just pi over 1, which is good old pi. Okay? All right, let's find asymptotes. We're going to go to 0. We're going to go from 0 to pi. What do I put in the middle? X plus pi over 2. Correct. And now I'm going to subtract pi over 2. Negative pi over 2. X. And now I have this. How would you do this? I have a full pi minus half a pi. Um, half, half, a pi. half a pi. If you have a full pi, but your brother or sister just ate half of it, then you're left with half a pi. Okay, 
So now we're going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I know. This is crazy, it's, guys. Right? I mean, take a look at that. Yeah. I just didn't want to spoil the surprise for you guys. So the very center is at what point? Zero. zero. And then what about the two other ones? What's halfway between zero and half pi? Pi over four. Pi over four. So, and here, you know, thank God for symmetry, I tell you, right? Okay. Yeah, I like this. It's very gratifying to be able to graph these like this. Center is always zero and then I ask myself well what am I graphing? Tangent or cotangent? It's cotangent. So on the right do we go up or down? Down. Down one so that means we're gonna go up one here and there. So my asymptotes were x equals plus or minus pi over 2. So what happens then if for asymptote, you just say pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and there is no x equals minus 1, right? Because asymptotes are what? Are they points, lines, what? And they're lines, correct? Asymptotes are lines. If you want to talk about a line, like if you want to refer to a line, you have to make your equation that of a line, okay? Okay. So here is where we're going to stop for today. So the homework that goes with this is actually here, you guessed it, just part one. Okay? Just part one. And the rest is for part two.